Hi guys, welcome back. And um, in this video, we've been talking about multiplying rational expressions. And so we're just going to start with this in here, basic example. I'm going to show you two different ways to do this. I want you to understand that either one of these ways is fine, but one is going to be much easier than the other when we try to apply that method to the stuff we see over here. So for instance, what I could do, here's, here's kind of the, the wrong way. It'll work, but it's just going to not help later on. I could just multiply everything straight across. So I could look at the top and I could say I have 5 times 6, which is 30. And I have x squared times x, which is x cubed. And then I have a y cubed. And then on the bottom, I have 2 times 10, which is 20. And I have x, and that's it. And I have y squared times y, which is y cubed. And then I can go through and start reducing stuff down. I see the y cubes completely go away. I see I have x cubed on top and a single x on bottom, so it looks like one x is going to go away from both top and bottom, so it becomes x squared on the top and no x is at all on the bottom. And 30 over 20 simply reduces to 3 over 2. Okay, So I end up with 3 over 2, and I have an x on the top, so I could write that as 3x over 2. That would be the simplified format. And that's all fine and dandy, but I also want you to understand we could have taken a different approach here that I'd like to point out. Rather than combine stuff and then reduce, sometimes it's easier to reduce stuff first and then combine. And what I mean is this. I notice, for instance, that before I combine anything, I have a 5 and a 6 and a 2 and a 10. And I could have, if I wanted to, take the 5 and the 10 and call that 1 over 2. And then furthermore, I could have noticed that maybe I have 6 over 2 and that reduces to 3 over 1. And so as far as numbers go, I only have a 3 left on top and I have a 2 left on bottom and those two don't go into each other. So it's 3 over 2 so far. As far as the x's go, I see I have an x on top and an x on the bottom here. So I'm just going to reduce those. I'm going to cancel them out. And that leaves me x-wise with only this term right here, which is an x squared. Did I mess something up up here? x cubed. Oh yeah, that's supposed to be an x squared. Sorry, x squared on top. As far as the y's go, well, okay, so I have y squared y over here, and, and I mean, you can see those, I, I know they're going to go away because I've already done them, but I could also just do something like this. I could say, you know what, I'm going to knock this down to a square and cancel out with the y down there, so one power of y gone, and then I go, wait a second, those two go away, and I don't have to mess up with them at all. And so in other words, it's just a different approach to it. And what we're doing here is reducing before we go ahead and put stuff together. You're going to see the value of doing this approach, this second approach here as we get into these more complicated problems. Okay. So the first step, first step to either of these problems, just like above, whenever we did this, is to factor first. So I look at the top left and I say, what do those have in common? They have a 3x in common, right? So I'm going to rewrite that as 3x times, and it looks like I have a 1 minus x for the top left piece. The bottom is a mad minute problem. Two numbers that add up to 4 that multiply to negative 5. I'm thinking x plus 5, x minus 1 there. The right hand side, I have two numbers that add up to positive 1 that multiply to negative 20. That's plus 5 minus 4. And then the bottom one is just simply the 3x. And so whenever I do it this way, okay, rather than try to combine all those together and multiply them out, I'm going to look for stuff to reduce first, right? Just like we just did. So I notice, for instance, x plus 5 goes away. And I see here that the, the 3x goes away. I also see something curious here. I have a 1 minus x and an x minus 1. Those look very, very similar, don't they? In fact, that's a positive 1, and this is negative. That's a negative x, and that's positive. And it turns out, okay, here's a, here's a trick. I probably won't pull this on you this year in any of our homework problems, but something worth knowing is that I could rewrite this 1 minus x as negative 1 times x minus 1. So I'm going to rewrite it as that, okay? Negative 1 times x minus 1. So if I pull out a negative sign, the x becomes positive and the 1 becomes negative. The reason that might be important is because now look what I have. x minus 1 and x minus 1 go away. I'm left with simply a negative 1 on the first fraction times, and then the second fraction only has the x minus 4. Now if I distribute that out, then that leaves me with 4 minus x, and that is the simplified form of that fraction. 
Uh, the one minus x, x minus one thing, just that's nice to know. Okay, you guys going on to pre-calculus, keep that in mind, but I probably won't do that to you here in our short time on rational functions at the end of the year. One more problem here, ready? Uh, what if one of them doesn't have a fraction? Well, I want you to understand that you could write this as x plus 4 over 1, and then now we have two fractions we're working with, and the problem looks exactly the same. So top one looks like it's factored already. It's just x plus 2, nothing to do there. The bottom is two numbers that add to 8, multiply to 16, thinking 4 and 4. So that's really x plus 4 times x plus 4. And then I'm going to multiply it times x plus 4 over 1. And now I see that one of the x plus 4s goes away from the top and the bottom, and I'm left with x plus 2 over x plus 4. So there's your work on multiplying fractions, multiplying rational expressions, and then simplifying. Notice what we did. Factor first, reduce things out, and then rewrite the answer.